Welcome to the third part of our bike controller tutorial series. In the previous videos, we've successfully crafted a functional bike controller. Now, in this episode, we'll take our controller to the next level by addition of follow camera, drift mechanics, and smoke effects. We'll also improve the turning dynamics and the precision of our ground check. Before we start the tutorial, I have an exciting announcement. If you want access to this project and others in the future, consider joining our Discord server. You can find all these resources and more by becoming our premium member. Don't miss out. Link is in description. Now let's integrate a follow camera for our bike. Begin by importing the Cinemachine package from the Package Manager. Create a virtual camera and assign both the follow and look at targets to the bike body. Adjust the follow offset according to your preferences for an optimal view and set the damping to zero in all axes. To maintain a neat hierarchy, let's organize the elements. Create an empty object named Cam Manager and designate both the main camera and virtual camera as its children. Now, let's test the functionality. As we drive forward, the camera follows the bike seamlessly. However, there's a small glitch when driving backward. The camera fails to shift to the front. To address this issue, head to the virtual camera settings. Under Body, change the binding mode to Simple Follow with World Up. This adjustment ensures that the camera smoothly transitions, even when the bike is moving backward. It's time to integrate skid marks into our bike controller. Create an empty child object under Bike and name it Visuals. Attach a trail renderer component to this object and configure its settings according to your preferences. Create a material for trails and assign it to the trail renderer component. You can also adjust the color. Move the game object under the tire of bike. Now, let's dive into the coding part. Create two floats first, one named skid width and the second one named min skid velocity and a trail renderer named skid marks. In the start function, set skid marks width to skid width and skid marks dot emitting to false to prevent the emission of skid marks at the game's start. Next, create a function named skid marks. Check if the bike is grounded and then if the bike's velocity in the X axis exceeds the min skid velocity. It's crucial to use the absolute value of the velocity to emit skid marks both when drifting in the positive and negative X axis. I have taken minimum velocity of 10 for emitting skid marks. You can adjust this value based on your preferences through trial and error. Enable emission if the conditions are met, otherwise disable it. Call this function in fixed update. Now check how our skid marks are working, but firstly give its reference to the bike controller, and they're working as expected. And finally, it's time to give our bike sound. Create some variables for managing the audio. First, audio source name it engine sound, then float min pitch with range 0 to 1 and max pitch with range 1 to 5. Then create another audio source for the skid sound. In the start function, mute the skid sound. Now create a function engine sound, and then in this function, lerp the engine sound's pitch from min pitch to max pitch with relevance to the current velocity offset. Now in the skid marks function, unmute the skid sound whenever bike is emitting skid marks and mute when it isn't. And call the engine sound function in fixed update. Now in editor, attach an audio source to the bike. Choose your desired engine sound or use the one provided in the description and set it to loop. Then drag it into the engine sound under the bike controller component. Attach another audio source for the skid sound. Select your preferred skid sound or use the provided one and set it to loop then. Drag it into skid sound under the bike controller component. And that's it. Let's check it. And it's working great. You can tweak your engine pitch from the bike controller component according to your needs. Now for the final touch, let's add realistic tire movement to our bike. In the script, create game objects for both the front and back tires. Introduce a float variable, tire rot speed, and set it to 10,000, determining the speed of the tire rotation. In the fixed update method, rotate the tire along the x-axis using time.delta time multiplied by tire rot speed multiplied by current velocity offset. This calculation ensures that the tires rotate in sync with the bike's velocity. Do the same for the back tire. With the coding part complete, 
head to the Unity Editor. Assign the references for both the front and back tires to the bike controller. Adjust the tire rot speed as per your preference. To introduce a smoky effect to our bike controller, begin by adding a particle system to the Visuals game object. Create a material and change the shader to the Universal Render Pipeline, 2D Sprite Lit Default. Select your smoke image, ensuring the texture type is set to Sprite, and drag it into the smoke material, Diffuse. Back in the particle system, drag and drop this material under Render Material and uncheck Play on Awake. Adjust the start color to complement your surroundings. Reduce alpha for a realistic see-through effect. Now let's delve into the coding aspect. Create a variable for the particle system and name it smoke. Establish a function smoke to check if skid marks are emitting. If so, play the smoke. Otherwise, stop it. And call this function in start. In the editor, fine-tune the particle system settings by decreasing the starting speed and increasing the rate over time under emission settings. Choose a suitable shape. I'm using a sphere, then set its properties. Activate inherit velocity, set the mode to initial, adjust the multiplier and enable noise. These configurations can be further customized based on your preferences. With these additions, our bike is now equipped with a smoke effect. As a final touch, open the script and in the Fixed Update section, replace Current Velocity Offset with Move Input, where we were rotating the tires in back tire rotation. And lastly, give reference of the smoke to the bike controller. Let's see how our bike performs and smoke is emitted. It looks great. And not only that, our bike also performs cool burnouts due to last update we did in the tire rotation. Let's add drift now. Drifts occur due to reduced friction between the tire and the ground, and we can achieve this by adjusting the sphere RB's drag. Start by creating a float variable called drift drag and nor drag, where nor drag is normal drag and drift drag is lesser than normal drag. Now within the brake function, when the space button is pressed, set the drag value to drift drag. In the else condition, reset the drag value to nor drag. You'll notice that the bike now slides when the space button is pressed. However, there's a small issue the bike stops turning while drifting. To address this, relocate the rotation function outside of the if condition with the brake function. Moreover, in the skid marks function, add a check for the space button as an OR condition for emitting skid marks. This modification ensures that skid marks are generated when either the space button is pressed or the bike is drifting. Let's see how's it working. And it's great. To enhance the bike's turning dynamics at lower velocities, let's make a refined adjustment. The issue arises when we multiply the rotational value with the current velocity offset. Create an animation curve and name it Turning Curve. Remove the usage of Current Velocity Offset and replace it with Turning Curve dot Evaluate and for parameter pass, absolute value of Current Velocity Offset so it doesn't rotate in opposite direction when moving backwards. This change ensures that the turning behavior is now governed by the values of the turning curve. Now head into the editor and fine-tune the turning curve according to your preferences to achieve the desired responsiveness at different velocity ranges. With this modification, the bike's turning behavior will now align with the characteristics defined by the turning curve. To enhance the precision of our ground check, we'll switch from using a ray cast to a sphere cast. This adjustment is particularly beneficial for navigating ramps and inclined surfaces with greater accuracy. Within the grounded function, create a float radius, which will be equal to ray length minus 0.02, which reflects the sphere's radius, and then create a vector 3 named origin. Set its value to the sphere RB's position, increased by its radius in upward direction. This adjustment places the origin precisely at the upper surface of the sphere RB. Now, instead of using physics.raycast, switch to physics.spherecast. Assign origin as the origin point. Set the radius to float radius. And rest of the things will remain unchanged. That wraps up our tutorial on creating a bike controller in Unity. Before you go, 
Don't forget to check out our Discord server if you want access to this project. Also, subscribe to our channel for more content like this. That's a wrap for today. Goodbye.